Okay, we're gonna be drawing a raccoon today. So here's an artistic decision you can make. If you want to draw um, more of his body, which I'm not, I'm not drawing much of his body, like just a few lines below his neck, uh, you could go vertical. If you wanna draw more of his head, which I am, you can go horizontal. So take a moment to figure out, um, you can look at my raccoon on the door to see which direction you would like to take your paper. So horizontal, if you would like to start with the pencil, that is okay. I'm gonna do a black crown just so you can see it better. Please do not forget your name. Um, at some point, bef make sure before you are painting, you put your name. So you're gonna flip it over and we're gonna draw a cute little raccoon. Again, I'm using black crown. You can use a pencil. We are gonna be painting this, so um, it doesn't matter what you technically use to draw with it. So the first thing is we're gonna draw the raccoon's head shape. It's kind of like a football shape, but you've gotta leave, leave room for the ears. Again, the first two lines. Kind of an eye football shape. And then again, I'm only drawing the body like this. That's how much body I'm showing to the end of your paper. And then the ears are come, not off the top, not like horns. And then if you've never seen a raccoon, he has what you call a mask on. So we're gonna start this point um, and it's gonna kind of hump in and go to the next point. And then down below, we're gonna kind of do an upside down U. This is his um, snout. Now, dog, cat, animal noses. If you've ever paid attention to an actual nose, it's not a triangle shape. Um, I'm gonna show you the shape I always draw. You are welcome to draw an upside down triangle if you don't feel comfortable, but it's a straight top. And you're gonna curve kind of like a rectangle but on the bottom, you're gonna kinda of do, kinda of looks like a pair of underwear. Um, but technically, that's what their animal noses look like if you ever really look at them. So off that little bottom part, you're gonna come down. Now make your raccoon's mouth however you want, mischievous, smiling, mad. And then the eyes, again, you can make your, um, Raccoon, look whatever direction you want. Maybe mine's eyeing his food. I'm gonna go ahead and color in. And again, if you like a specific eye on your raccoon, you all know, I know many of you have a special way you like to draw eyes. Last but not least is his big um, striped tail coming off the side. So it's gonna come out and around, it's, oops. Um, and it is striped. Okay, so again, figure out what you're drawing it with. Um, like I said, I use that. If you're done drawing it, don't forget your name. That is very important. Um, this is going to go to our folders that are at your table. We're not going to add the color quite yet. So make sure you grab your folder, put your raccoon with your name in the folder on your cart and then we'll be adding the color next time. Okay, we're gonna be adding color to our raccoon so make sure you have your folder, find your paper, put your folder back on your carts, make sure you have a paint mat, um, get your raccoon. Now on your tray, you're going to have two colors. You're going to have the dark blue color that was from our owl, and then you're going to have black. So those two colors. Be careful. Don't dip in the wrong one because um, they look very similar. Of the... So the first we're going to start with is our dark blue. We're going to be painting the background of the dark blue um, before we move to the black. If you get to the black today, that's great. If not, again, don't dip all the way down, just dip enough to paint around. 
Again, just like owls, our little raccoon friends are also nocturnal animals. And I hope we all know what that means. So I'm going to work my way, smearing my paint around my raccoon. I'm trying to remember not to dip my brush all the way in and get way too much paint. Okay, so I have finished my background layer, so I'm going to make sure I can wipe off my brush on my mats. And if you have time, you can move to the black. Now, the reason we paint the background before we paint the animal is if you accidentally paint in the part that you don't want to, like over here, then I could just paint the black over it. So on your raccoon, um, this part of your mask is going to be black. Now be careful. I know this part may be in pencil. Obviously mine's in black crown. Don't worry about that. We're going to, um, we'll use a permanent marker at the end once everything's dry to add those darker details in. And then the tail. Okay. And again, his nose, we'll use a marker for that. I don't want to use your brush because your brush is going to be too big. So we're going to let this part dry before we add our last detail, which is our gray and our permanent marker. So please make sure that your paintbrush gets in the bucket. Make sure that both of your paints are closed once everybody's done using them. Please make sure if you got the tray, you walk the tray to the back. Put that up. Everybody else, make sure you're walking your whole paint mat along with your raccoon to the back. Put your raccoon in the drying rack. Put your um, paint mat on the metal cart.